Welcome back, aromatherapist enthusiast, to another episode of Vetiver Vibes, your trusted source for all things aromatherapy. I'm your host, Nikki Fraser. As we prepare to bid farewell to summer's bloom and embrace the cozy allure of fall, we thought it's the perfect time to revisit one of our all-time favorite episodes. Today, we're rewinding the tape to share the fragrant treasure that will make your autumn season truly extraordinary. Rachel and I have the pleasure of talking about some of our favorite essential oils to use over the fall season. Whether you're soaking up the summer vibes or pumpkin spice and cozy sweater kind of person, enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Vetiver Vibes podcast. We're your hosts, Nikki Frazier and Rachel Dean, certified clinical aromatherapists. We are excited to have you here on today's episode where you know that you'll get the best essential oil scoop. This episode is brought to you by Essentia, a leading online school for aromatherapy. If you want to learn more about how to become a clinical aromatherapist, check out the courses at www.schoolofessentia.com. Hi, welcome to Vetiver Vibes. I'm very excited today to be here with Rachel and Rhonda. So all three of us from Essentia get to be on together today. And we are going to be talking about how to become a certified aromatherapist and choose the best aromatherapy school. There's so much information out there and it's important that when you're making this investment that you make the decision that's best for you. So Rhonda, how do people pick the best aromatherapy school? Like, do they just Google it? How do they find the best place to learn? Well, I mean, Google can be helpful, but it's first knowing like what the requirements would be for a school. Um, and, and the way that we kind of filter out what that is, is you actually need to take a step back and look at what kind of organizations you want to be recognized with. The whole point of going to an aromatherapy school is for credibility. You want to become accredited. You want to be certified. You want to be trustworthy to your clientele. And you want people to have faith in the health advice you're offering them. So in order to do that, you would need to go back to the associations and see what their requirements are. So generally their requirements have specific hours. They have specific schools that offer that level of education. Um, and that, that school will have criteria that has to meet the association's um, sort of set guidelines or standardized um, levels of education to be accredited. And then each association is a little bit different. So when we're looking at Canada, for example, um, the, the largest association is the Canadian Federation of Aromatherapists and their, their minimum program is 400 hours. So that's quite a lot more hours than taking a quick weekend course, right? You're looking at a full-time six months. <laughs> um, yeah. And then you're, you're also, you're not just studying aromatherapy, you're studying anatomy and physiology. So there's much more involved in, in the criteria that you need. And then these associations usually have testing criteria as well. Um, most designations do. So with the CFA, you have to write two exams to become a certified aromatherapist. And, and then you have to expand beyond that. So once you figure it out, which association you want to be part of, then you have to look at municipal or whatever area you live in. So if you're in the States, it may be like a state law or it may be a township or it depends on the sort of structure of your government and business permits. So most um, places will require some type of business permit and that business permit usually requires education to back it up. They are just not in the habit of handing out permits to anybody. And that's because yeah. this is a healthcare stream. It's not, you know, a fun game for everybody to smell things. <laughs> when I had my aromatherapy practice in a spa, I had my own business permit and I had to go and meet with our, our local city people who hand out permits. I don't know what their titles are. Um, and they asked me like a ton of questions and they wanted to make sure I was legit and I had to show my certification and my insurance and all of those kinds of things to make sure that I was like that and accredited as a proper business um, for aromatherapy and aroma massage and reflexology and stuff like that. So it was definitely very important for that. 
that's not yeah. everywhere either that needs it. Um, so I know where no, I'm at. No, but my area did. Yeah, because I know where I'm at, I don't need it. Um, if I'm in, I'm going, as I'm going into a clinic soon, part-time, they require the insurance proof, but proof. anything above that isn't required. Even when I'm working out of my place, it's not required. So it's important to know that each place is very different too for what's needed. We only live like an hour away from each other, so yeah it's that's why it's also important yeah I mean absolutely like I live in a small town and um the city that's 10-15 minutes like it borders on my township they have business permits for this but our small town does not you know so if I just lived on one side of that tiny border I may not require (laughs) that (laughs) right so (laughs) it's definitely different um and that usually those business permits if you're in Canada they are and in, in specifically in Ontario, they are usually a township requirement, right? So you would go to your local town office to look at the permits. It's not usually a provincial or federal requirement in Canada. Um, I can't speak for the states. Unfortunately, I haven't opened a business down there, but it's still worth checking because you don't want to be on the wrong side of not having a permit. <laughs> and I've heard a few places, um, different places around the world outside of Canada and the U.S. where they definitely require that going to the municipality office wherever they need to go for business uh, licensing and getting it. So it's definitely important to check wherever you are located around the world. Yes, and and one of the reasons that this is actually so important, um, if we look at Canadian history, for example, if you look at the city of Toronto, their business permits, um, aromatherapy actually used to fall under what a category that was called body rub um, persons <laughs> mm-hmm. like it was Seven very tests. inappropriate it didn't yeah it didn't even describe aromatherapy so that it's was just pretty wild. Much what my interview was about I they <laughs> wanted to make sure that I was legit and not just going to be a rub and tug yeah yes. <laughs> reflexology and aromatherapy they're both put under that category and I believe in the UK it's still under that category I've heard a lot of people say um, they're still struggling because yeah. they're seen under that category still, unfortunately. Yeah, and then yeah. this is what circles us back to why even the associations themselves are so important. The recognition and what's changed that criteria in the city of Toronto and probably most of Ontario's townships now came from the Canadian Federation of Aromatherapists. So they were there lobbying to the legislative authorities that this is not a rub and tug, right? And that and that's so important because aromatherapy is a healthcare modality. And so Definitely. there's a lot of education that needed to come down through those bodies so that we were getting the proper recognition. Thank you, CFA. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. So what are some of the other criteria so that people might want to look for in aromatherapy school? So associations, um, are there other associations that are well known too? Like we've talked about the CFA because we're in Canada, but we are, are actually part of another association, NAHA. Um, which is part of like North American um, Association. And there are lots of other ones too that we've contemplated ourselves, just haven't quite joined yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, with Naha being this, the biggest one in North America, uh, I mean, and they're, wor- they're recognized worldwide also. So it's nice to have being part of that association where people around the world have the respect for that association. Uh, I think it makes a huge difference. And like you just said, there's so many associations around the world though. So depending on what country you're in, I know Australia has a really good recognized association. So does the UK, I'm sure yeah, there are sure. other ones also. And, and these associations are really important. Like these have been established long before most of the products have been out on the market. Mm-hmm. So when we're looking at, for example, like the Canadian Federation of Aromatherapists, that was started in 1993. It's been almost 30 years. And Naha, I don't even remember what year it is, but they're a little bit older than the Canadian Mm -hmm. Association. So that's a lot of criteria. This is a lot of um, education and information that has come down through the line much longer than most products have been on the market. So (laughs) Naha has been around since 1990. So they're not (laughs) spring chickens. You know, they've been around for a long time. They know the importance of using aromatherapy safely, having, you know, the respect for aromatherapists, they should be respected for the education that they've, they've taken. 
Yes. And with us being a school that's recognized by CFA, but as well as NAHA, um, most of the other international associations all over the world will likely recognize our level of education that we offer. Um, some mm -hmm. of our students we know have explored that and we've been invited by invitation by some of these associations. So mm -hmm. there's certainly a recognition that that level of education, even if a school is only being recognized with the Canadian or NAHA um, level three, probably has the same criteria needed almost worldwide for aromatherapy associations. So and that's, that's okay. something that our school has personally thrived to do is to provide the highest level of education that we could in the aromatherapy certification standards. <laughs> so one of the other things that people look for in aromatherapy school is of course cost. Did you wanna talk about that a little bit and how that can vary greatly and what we've seen? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not like shopping at a Walmart, right? You don't go and you pick the cheapest course, you pick the course that fits your needs, right? So, mm -hmm. um, and this is really important, but at the same time, sometimes you can find quality things at Walmart that are worth the buy. So don't always exclude them just because the cost is there. Um, certainly, if you look at our school, for example, I mean, we're Canadian, sorry, our prices are great because we charge Canadian dollars, <laughs> right? I was gonna say, and that's the big thing of, different countries have different price ranges and Canadian when you look at Canadian schools in general they are a lot cheaper than American schools it's just yeah. the way the economy is and everything and on top of that because our fees are actually in Canadian dollars anyone from other places around the world you know our dollar is not as valued as other dollars so it's a lot <laughs> it's even it's less expensive but because you, most people's dollar is valued more, it's even less, less expensive. Yeah. So a yes. double bonus for especially Americans, but even quite a few other places around the world. Yeah, but we would, like I would say if it would be reasonable to expect to spend at least $1,000. I mean, this is post-secondary education. If you look at the average dollar amount for a course per an hour, that's a steal for a 400 hour course, a thousand bucks is, it's the cheapest you could go. I mean, that should be worth $4,000, but you could probably find this course for $4,000 US. If you go look through the hundreds of US schools offering it, and they probably are accredited and that's their industry and that's what they're competing with, right? Um, but for us, like the, that's the thing I would say, your starting point is probably at least a thousand dollars. If you're spending less than that, you really need to dive into why the school could offer such a cheap course. Is it that the qualifications aren't high enough? Because you can go to, when you look at NAHA, for example, um, great list of schools, but they have three levels of membership. So you could be looking at a 50 hour course. You could be looking at a hundred hour course. You could be looking at a 300 hour course or a four or almost 500 hour course. And each of those will offer different value for the dollar, but a 50 or a hundred hour course, even a two or 300 hour course will not get you certification in Canada. So even when you're looking at that cost point, you're not going to spend less than $1,000 in Canada on proper education. So it's just really setting that expectation properly. I can assure you, if you can find a $30 online aromatherapy diploma, you're not learning what a certified aromatherapist really knows. <laughs> Agreed. Well, and that's <laughs> the big difference because we have both a level one and a level three course. You know, our 50 hour course is great, but it's not going to give you that clinical experience that you need as our clinical course does. I look at the 50 hour course and that's someone who, you know, is maybe a naturopath and just wants to add in a few essential oils into the practice, or maybe even just a parent and they want to make their own products at home for just themselves, their family. And they want to make sure that they are learning to use them safely and properly with themselves and their kids or whoever's in their family. Yeah. Then they have and some massage therapists too. I would say yeah. massage therapists are another mm -hmm. um, yeah. market, the people that use that a lot too. Yeah. So you don't want or need the full clinical. You're not going to be diving into people's health history or, you know, making product lines, things like that. But you want to make sure that the small amount that you are using, you know, the safety behind it so that you're properly diluting. So there's a time and a place, I think, for every course. 
But someone who's taking the 50 hour course is definitely not going to have the same education as the 400 plus. And it still doesn't course. cost just 30 bucks. <laughs> no, because there's still a lot of work that goes behind it. And there's assignments and case studies. Mm-hmm. And to me, that makes a difference too. Of is, is a course going to be, here's the material, and then we're never going to talk to you again so there's no support there's no assignments to make sure that the person's actually learning the information retaining that information because i mean anyone well that ties into the next question yeah that ties into the next question of what is like another thing to look for is teaching style right so the teaching style of the school so obviously in our case the three of us are the instructors um but other schools are have different teaching styles so do one of you guys want to elaborate more on that yeah so when when we're looking at um teaching styles and and it, this does kind of weigh into cost a little bit too this is why you can look at one school that charges a thousand dollars and another school is charging four right it's sometimes it's the delivery method it's the cost of that school i mean certainly i would expect that every school that prices their courses as they do the value is still there um, so we're not discrediting that at all, but the the actual cost is associated with how they administer it. If you're ha- teaching an in-person class, you're renting a facility, right? You're also paying for insurance. Then you're providing print material to your class um, student, your class of students. You're bringing technology with you. Like there's a lot involved with that. When you're looking at a school like ours, we're online, so the the most beneficial part of being online is you have that cost control factor and the flexibility. So we offer a course that you can sign up for at any time of the year. There's no enrollment period. The enrollment period is 365 days of the year. So when you're ready, we're ready for you. <laughs> you know, Even and if then, we're on vacation, we're still ready for you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and it, you can find us on a beach somewhere in the Muskokas or maybe in another country for that matter you know, all celebrating your enrollment because we're still working <laughs> while we're yeah, on vacation. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> and that that's just because we love our jobs, right? We're not doing something sure. that we need a vacation from here. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, it absolutely is. So that teaching style, it weighs into that. And the way that we offer our teaching style is that we made our course available to everybody all over the world. And we were able to keep our costs low because we offer that online piece. We don't have the in-person meet every week, you know, and, and those things do have an expense to them. But the support may not be that much different. If you reach out to us, you'll learn very quickly that we're very responsive to emails. We do have support groups, more like Facebook um, student groups, for example. And we're usually pretty quick to answer questions, except for those vacations. Those are the time we might not answer right away, but <laughs> but there's three of us and it's very rare that all three of us are even on vacation together um, at the same time, right? So you're still going to get more support because there's more of us. Like, I'm not sure that there's another aromatherapy school out there that is run by three instructors. I haven't found it. Maybe somebody else has, um, but that's something that we're very unique for. There's three of us. We've taken our three minds and collectively collaborated a unique course based on our experiences in practice and our education in aromatherapy. And just so to that, go back, just to go back to what you were talking about, like in person, I think that's one of the biggest factors is everyone knows most people should know their own learning style. And that's where if you really can't do computers and you can't do independent learning then you need to, and you really need that in-person, then those in-person might be what's more needed for you. But that's going to be a big thing, like you mentioned, as to why the price might be more, you know, going into a certain facility, into a learning environment once a week for six months, isn't necessarily doable for a lot of people. And that's why we did the online where everyone has such different schedules, different needs, and you can work around it uh, around your own schedule needs, be work, family, whatever commitments that you have. Um, Because I I know that was one of the biggest things for me is I just didn't have the time to meet somewhere in person once a week, twice a week for however long it was going to be. There was just no possible way I could ever do that. 
Um, I think one of the other things too that people should keep in mind when they're looking at schools are, is, you know, if it's in person or online or correspondence, because sometimes people will just send a book out and mm -hmm. then you, you correspond with your school. That's all great. Is also understanding if there are, um, if it's just online and it's just text and words, can you print the material, which we, we do offer that ability, but not everybody does. Can you print it? Can you, um, is there videos so that you can watch and hear, the, hear it? So sometimes if you are just getting things um, in a printed format, you also want to hear it. So um, we went through our course when we did a big upgrade update um, about Almost, I guess almost two years a year ago, ago now and oh my gosh, two years ago almost time goes so fast um but we <laughs> added videos to our course after we launched because we knew that that was something that would help a bunch of people mm -hmm. and then of course now we have these podcasts too so people are able to listen to that and get to know us there too um but it's important just to know and understand all of that when you're going in as to what exactly is being offered um i think and that makes so. me think too of you know email into the school that you're inquiring see if you actually click with the instructor because to me that's another big thing if you email in and you get short snippy responses versus you know actually answering full questions that type of stuff like building that rapport for myself it's something that's important i've reached out to different companies wanting to spend money with them and when they don't get back to me for 3 months or it, what they would i do get a response back it's something that's just short and I don't, I just don't feel the vibe there. Um, yes. Then to me, that we makes a difference. We love getting those emails. We love it. We love when I someone do. emails us asking us questions about our course. It is like literally one of our favorite things every day. <laughs> Even if they decide not to choose us, we love that they thought about it and having those interactions and those conversations and sometimes we'll meet with people via zoom to mm -hmm. like have that conversation because they just have lots of questions and they want to um get to know us and those are I some love, of the best times yeah i love the zoom meetings honestly when i have a, when there's a potential student who is like hey you know can you answer these questions and i'm like sure and then i often throw out you know if you ever want to meet through zoom and when the odd few people who say yes i'm like yes I, it's just <laughs> that interaction of being able to see the person and i pull up the course and walk them through the course and answer all the questions that they have and it's just a great way to you know see it before you buy it because it's an investment that we want to make sure people are going to follow through on too Absolutely. I mean, your success is our success, right? If you're not successful, we can't be. That's what it comes yeah. down to ultimately. So I think yeah. that's, it's very important. Um, one of the other things that you can look for, and this applies like, especially to Canadians, we have tuition tax receipts here. Mm -hmm. So we're actually a designated educational institution with the government of Canada. So what that means is when you sign up for our course, you qualify for tax credits for school. Um, and so that's a huge bonus, right? Because mm -hmm. for uh, six months of the year, you could be claiming and saving money on your individual taxes. So you're going to get that tax receipt. Um, we don't know if other countries accept it at the moment. Um, and we've, we haven't really applied. Um, but certainly you could always try because we are recognized in Canada. I can't see why another country would deny it. But um, the alternative is sometimes just the option to write it off it's, if it's a business expense too, right? So, um, but that that tax piece is like so important. There are lots of schools out there. Not all of them have pursued that designation. And just being recognized by the government. I mean, we've put the effort to go through that and it just shows that extra level of, you know, credibility and professionalism that, you know, we want our students to to look professional and be credited too. Like you're taking a, a course from a legitimate school. One of the other things that we think is really important when you're looking at a school is looking at that connection that you can build with the instructors and the school. Um, so what we mean by that is um, most of your instructors will have diverse backgrounds. So they'll come from really interesting um, other things that they were teaching either before aromatherapy or they are integrated as part of their aromatherapy practice. Sometimes they might specialize in something really interesting. So a really great example is um, perhaps a school that's run by a nurse might focus more in on medical sciences, where a school run by like a chemist might have fabulous chemistry, right? <laughs> Although we do have 
pretty awesome chemistry in our course. Nobody's ever gotten less than 80%. So, um, thank you, Rhonda. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but that, I mean, that's the important part, right? So those things do weigh in on how the instructor wrote the course. And so when you're looking at our course, there's three of us. So you're going to get really diverse interactions from all three of us. Um, so if you, if you actually went back and you listened to our podcasts, um, about each of us, you probably learned a little bit about each of us. So like I have children who are autistic. So a lot of my writings, when I write about things, I am influenced by sensory things, right. And, and chemistry and how things affect our body, uh, mentally and physio- physiologically, right. Um, <clears throat> where if you had an instructor who was a nutritionist, they might talk more about the lack of nutritional value in essential oils or, <laughs> you know, so there, it, it certainly weighs in on what there's, there's sort of those fine tunes or those tweaks within the course. So just really go and read about the school, what they offer, who the instructors are and get to know who the instructors are. Because a little piece of your instructors is going to be in every course that you take, um, provided they wrote their course, I would assume, right? So we wrote our course from scratch. So it's designed by us. It's influenced by us. We wrote it and it's all about, it's from our heart. And I think we show a lot of the three of us into it. Um, I mean, with my background as a counselor, I've put a lot into like the subtle aspect is one of my big passions. Bringing in the mind, body, spirit connection is very important. And then even, you know, specializing in pregnancy, children with aromatherapy, that's another huge one that, you know, being able to develop those mini courses, things like that. And then Rachel with the business background, being able to offer some business information and, you know, like we've all put so much of our own little expertise into it. It, you know, we tried to, to well round it that way, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, I mean, we definitely made the attempt to create a a shop, a one-stop shop where you come to Eccentria to first introduce yourself to aromatherapy, then pursue the certification then grow your business with the aroma massage and then expand it with the many um, mini courses. And if you're new to the world of being an entrepreneur, we have business courses. We will teach you everything you need to know about branding a business, what your clientele should look like. And um, we're, we're going to be rolling out a course about how to launch your business. And it involves things like marketing and stuff. So we're very focused on your success as an aromatherapy practitioner. And if you're not interested in becoming the practitioner, we have free courses because we just want to teach. We love doing that too. (laughs) And I think that's, what's important when you're looking at a school, you know, do they just offer the once the one course and then that's it. And, and if so, that's perfectly fine. If you don't want to explore anything else, or if you've taken a course somewhere else, and then you want to expand and go look at a different school, right? Look around and see what's being offered. Cause the other thing too, is you might want to see if there's discounts If you're uh, already a student, some schools may offer discounts on other courses, things like that. So schools will often Mm -hmm. compensate students for their loyalty and give discounts on other courses. So that's something else that if you're looking for a school, how many courses do they have? And are they being loyal to their students and offering any kind of discounts like that too? It can make a difference. Yeah, what's the benefit of being a student at that school versus another school? So, I mean, there's always different things that you're going to find at each school, wherever you're looking at, wherever you are in the world. I think the biggest thing is just, do you feel a link to the school that you want to go to? If you don't, if you don't feel that link, if you don't have that good vibe, then you're not going to do the work either. I know for myself, if I can be excited and then I enroll in something and then the vibe's just not there, I'm going to put it off to the side because it's not something I'm going to look forward to. So just really finding the school that's right for you is going to be the most important so that you actually do the work and and do what's needed because no one wants to waste that money and not get the certification at the end. And Definitely. and we don't we don't want you to waste that money either. No. <laughs> We want you to succeed. (laughs) So Rachel, what would be your biggest, your last biggest point on what's like, what someone should look for in a school? I think that when they are looking for a school, that the connection is 
the biggest part um, because I know that when I'm learning from somebody that I want to know that I trust them and all of my instructors to date in aromatherapy or elsewhere, obviously I do other, other education. Um, it's important to know that you, that I can trust them and that I can ask questions and that it's open, that kind of thing. And, uh, the other point is just, um, I was going to say, making sure that wherever you are, that what you're getting from the school is what you need. So we offer courses that people are taking internationally, um, across the whole globe and we're make, you know, ideally, they're getting what they need from us. Rhonda, <laughs> what would be your last point? Um, I think my last point is that, um, I mean, that whole in-person versus the online piece, um, a lot of people kind of fall into, I need that those scheduled courses for that accountability piece. And um, we like we found a workaround for that in our mm-hmm. online school. And, and what we did was we created a scheduled template so that you could custom create a calendar, like a course outline, a weekly calendar to keep yourself committed. Um, But there's still that commitment that you still have to make to yourself to following your accountability calendar. Um, But certainly you could always meet with other students. So we offer, even as an online school, a lot of really great suggestions about how to get the type of support that you would get in an in-person setting. And so and why that, do we know that that calendar works, Rhonda? Because Rhonda <laughs> created it for us and we <laughs> did it when we were studying and that calendar kept all of us completely on track and we killed it and blew right through everything. Um, and just, groups, those are and just good. keeping ourselves <laughs> accountable. And that's where like we stress to our students form a study group because that's what you you're your own worst enemy most of the time so if it's just yourself depending on yourself oh I'll just do it tomorrow I'll just do it tomorrow sometimes however if you have even one other person who's counting on you to meet every Sunday then you will get your work done for Sunday because you don't want to disappoint the other person so there's and you know we give lots of tips and tricks for studying and doing that accountability and it's yeah yeah, I mean, I, I would say if you had a Netflix addiction, then maybe in person is for you because you can't pull yourself away from it. But I don't know a lot of people who have that. So, <laughs> for sure. well, I think that's a great spot to wrap it up. So, thank you for tuning in to Vetiver Vibes, the essential oil scoop. I'm Nikki Fraser. I'm Rhonda Greenbury. <laughs> I'm Rachel Dean. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you for spending your time with us here at Vetiver Vibes. This episode was brought to you by Accentria, a leading online aromatherapy school. Don't forget to check out some of our free resources at www.schoolofacentria.com. If you love this episode or you got a lot of value out of it, please make sure you share it with someone in your community who you think would enjoy it too. If you haven't already subscribed or reviewed the show yet, you can go on over to your preferred streaming platform and hit subscribe, then leave a review. This is the best way to help support us and we appreciate it. Email us with a screenshot of your review and we will send you a free guided meditation as our way to say thank you. This podcast is for information purposes only. We are certified clinical aromatherapists and holistic health professionals. If you have a medication concern, please refer to your health team. Everyone's health is unique to themselves, so the topics and suggestions stated may or may not apply directly to you.